On JMS Focus this morning, we reviewed last Thursday's televised town hall-style meeting that reviewed President Yoon's key policy goals. The president set the tone, stating reform isn't popular, but it is essential for sustainability. President Yoon reaffirmed his resolute commitment in reforming areas, particularly pension, labor, and education. This morning, we're joined by Professor Kim Byung-ju of the Hanguk University of Foreign Studies to better understand this very blueprint. Uh, good morning, Professor Kim. Good morning. Uh, as expected, it went an hour over the allotted time, this televised town hall style meeting. We have a lot of grounds to cover, but we've divided into questions that may just highlight these key points. Can we start by discussing the National Pension Plan reform? So as we've discussed on the program several times with rapid changes in demographic into an age society and Korea's national pension facing the risk of running out, there is a great deal of urgency here. So what are the key issues and the main directions on pension reform? As you mentioned, the the core of the problem is that uh, we will have more people, fast aging uh, population, which means we will have more people who will need to receive pension uh, coverage and pension payment at their old age, and we will have a fewer people to to pay for the pensions, to put money into it. So we're basically, we're expecting more uh, outflow and then uh, a lot less inflow. Uh, if this continues, basically, we will run out of the the reservoir called national pension. We'll just run out of money. Mm. And that is the the essence, the core of the problem. And so uh, the looking at this picture, basically the the real challenge is young people don't see sustainability. I mean, this is not a sustainable system. Mm. Why am I putting my money into this? Just, you know, to help these people who are getting old before me. When, when I get old, uh, mm. you know, there is no money to receive. It's mm. a real serious question of trust. Mm. And uh, as we plan our... Uh, you know, lifetime ahead, that's a real big issue. So that's that's why this is such an essential uh, part of it. And so what the uh, this current government, the UN government has in mind is, uh, first of all, they'll have to, uh, what they're saying is we will need a consensus in terms of uh, getting more money in basically, right, uh, having people pay more mm. for their pension system in the future. And uh, overall, uh, what we are looking at is uh, they're saying President Yoon himself was talking about this point uh, at the town hall meeting, but he was saying Korea is currently collecting you know, about the half of what average OECD countries people are paying for their national pension. So mm. we're not paying enough, basically. And what that means is that we have to agree to pay more overall. Uh, the thing is, uh, you know, as he mentioned and as many have mentioned before, uh, when you want to reform this way, asking people to pay more, that basically, politically speaking, translates into fewer votes in the next election. So mm-hmm. this is a politically unpopular measure, but basically something uh, we all have to do in order to to make our system sustainable. That was the argument he was making. And some of the number that sticks to my mind, he mentioned, is that according to current projection, mm, you know, inflow and outflow balance. Mm -hmm. uh, Right now, of course, uh, you know, since its creation, National Pension Program, the reservoir of the money, the overall fund itself has been growing. It is still growing, meaning that there, there is, as we speak, there is actually more inflow at the moment okay. than the outflow. But the thing is, we will hit the peak in 2042. Uh-huh. So, uh, and after that, it will go down, meaning that outflow will exceed inflow uh, mm-hmm. from 2042. And from that point, it will take only 15 years to have the overall fund go dry, basically. Uh-huh. So they're saying 2057, we will just run out of money. Uh, the the fund will hit zero. So that's a very scary situation for those of us who are thinking uh, ahead at this point. Right. Uh, so uh, those numbers, 2042, hit, hitting the peak, going down, and then 2057, 
uh, running dry in terms of this fund. So that's the sense of urgency. Mm. And so if this government can succeed in generating consensus about mm. how to fix this system, it was enormous success. But in, in order to fix it, people will have to agree to pay more. And that's a tough spot. I mean, we talked about the state of the economy quite frequently. And when things are tough and you ask people to pay up more, actually, it's unpopular right. in general. But it seems that the urgency seems to point at a really obvious fact that the the well will right. run dry within mm-hmm. our lifetime for the young generation. And so something right. needs to be done about it beforehand. Right, exactly. Okay, so the direction we understand, because we want to cover other uh, other important key measures too, I want to move on to covering labor. President Yoon devoted the most time of the meeting to actually explaining uh, his version of labor reform, stressing establishing uh, the rule of law once more. So on, on labor reform, what are the problems that the Yoon government sees and how do they want to change it? Basically, Yoon government is there's a problem of lacking lack of flexibility mm-hmm. in the labor market, lack of uh, justice, and then uh, more to do in order to enhance safety at work and then uh, enhance uh, the, the stability at work. Mm-hmm. So flexibility, justice, safety, and uh, stability, those are the four major themes that this union government has in mind. And Flexibility means that, you know, like adjusting the system, you know, to meet the changing demand. For instance, they're talking about 52-hour week uh, work, Mm. 52-hour work week, Mm. basically. And it has been uh, put in place and the government wants to change it. We don't have to go with the weekly limits. Uh, Let's go with the current limit, but make it flexible. Uh, If we can do 52-hour times four, uh, we can come up with a monthly limit. And mm-hmm. with the monthly limit, we can be more flexible with week within each week. Mm-hmm. And the same thing goes the the yearly. You can calculate the year cap and then we can be more flexible every month and so. And they're saying let's let's in you know introduce flexibility to this kind of to a seemingly rigid system. That's mm-hmm. the idea. And uh, Having to do with that is also the the fairness question. For decades now, Koreans are painfully aware that that uh, we have a uh, perm- what we call permanent job. I mean, actually, permanent job. I think I I think that that expression is on you know oxymoron, meaning uh, the word that has self contradiction. Mm-hmm. There's no job that's ever permanent in life, but mm-hmm. but we call it permanent job, uh, which is. Uh, you know, the, the system protects the job stability and often in manufacturing and so on, strong unions actually mm. are behind these jobs. But because these jobs are what they call, quote unquote, unnaturally, in my own view, permanent and highly protected and, and well paid, mm. business cannot go on with this labor. So labor supply this way, highly, uh, you know, uh, very costly, high priced labor that's uh, totally inflexible. So over the decades, Korea has developed a kind of a duality labor market where kind of contract workers come in without uh, protection. They're Mm -hmm. not protected by labor and they're getting paid a lot less than so-called permanent jobs and so on. So the suffering of these people is, is tremendous mm. and the uh, current uh, conservative government see problem with that and they want to kind of gradually uh, build down the wall that separates two different parts of this uh, duality labor system mm. here so that's what they're talking about overall fairness in a way mm. and uh, uh, overall also uh, the last point would be they talk about safety measures that's mm. obvious point we don't have to cover but last point would be stability of the labor market, which is something that you mentioned at the beginning of this uh, mm-hmm. question here. Uh, stability here, what they mean is the rule of law. I'm mm-hmm. not sure whether it's the best way to deal with labor uh, labor relations when you emphasize the rule of law, but uh, there is a sense. It makes sense up to the point where the UN government says the agreements need to be preserved, what's agreed has to be upheld, and labor unions should not just go out there and smash uh, what the previous agreements and promises, commitments, and so on. So up to that point, I think that makes sense. So overall direction mm. seems to make sense, but details, we have to wait. 
All right. With that, I want to ask you about education reform, Professor Kim. I mean, we are a very heated uh, country when it comes to education in general. So it seems that it's also a priority, especially in trying to make welfare for infant care and secondary education readily available for those who need it. Uh, We see so many different people arguing for so many different things. Uh, What is it that the Yun government has in mind and wants to focus on? when it comes to education yeah. reform. Yeah, President Yun at his town hall meeting recognized that there, there are two points in education reform. To me, they're kind of contradicting with one another, not necessarily contradicting, but they're kind of like in, uh, they seem to be running in the two opposite directions. Mm. That is, one is the, the welfare side. Maybe not opposite direction. Maybe we can put together in separately. But one is welfare side, protection of right. the people, meaning those people who need child care protection from the government in early stage of education, offering them equal opportunity. That's that's one fairness and welfare side aspect of it. And second aspect is uh, is a growth and and uh, competitiveness. Uh, the higher education needs to offer the the education training that are needed, you know, to make our Korea's uh, workforce more creative, productive going forward. Mm-hmm. So those two. Uh, two different directions mm. need to be pursued and then uh, he he recognized that's the way to go but again uh, you know there are a lot of rhetorics but details need to be weighted all right uh let's move on to real estate tax one issue filling the headlines last week that had originated from thursday's town hall meeting was in fact real estate tax what can we say at this point regarding some of the central points brought up by president yun's administration we are reminded how serious uh, the real estate situation was under the Moon administration, the uh, speculation, overheating, people were screaming out, uh, oh my God, I will never be able to buy my house because the price is going way up, skyrocketing and so on. So as a result of it, the Moon government introduced many different kinds of tax measures and uh, measures to suppress the market as a whole. But now, as the economy has going has gone down, you know, head, heading downwards, uh, obviously this government faces a uh, opposite need in a way to to the kind of soft land in the, yeah. the ma- market movements, and uh, so that's uh, what uh, looks like this government is pursuing. And President Yoon was saying that uh, he'll like to introduce some of the measures to slow down of the. Uh, excessive speed of cooling of the market. And one of that is uh, those people who own multiple houses, uh, several you know, different houses and use most of them for renting. For them, this government wants to cut the tax for them. Previous government said, these are the people who are actually you know, driving the speculation and heating up the market, so we want to impose them uh, high taxes. But the union government wants to turn around and say, if we have continue to have high tax on these people. Actually, the, the, the people who are renting these spaces will have to bear with the cost. The, the burden will be shifted. So, mm-hmm. you know, to hold, uh, help those people who have to rent their houses, mm-hmm. we want to cut our, our taxes for those people who are renting their houses to, to, to others. So mm-hmm. that kind of seems to make, make sense at this particular moment. And also... Uh, in order to seek soft landing, uh, the UN government wants to uh, kind of like relax restrictions on uh, lending on houses, mortgages, and so on. So mm. they kind of seem to make sense. Time changes and actions needs to change. Uh, one last point we want to address is a key agenda related to these reform issue. Uh, to scrap or to scale down the Moon Jae-in care policy or Moon Care in short, the initiative under the previous Moon government to expand health insurance coverage. Uh, this was not extensively talked about at Thursday's town hall meeting, but it did fill headlines throughout last week. Uh, who's taking advantage to an extent that is unfathomable by most of us as a president you talked about it on Tuesday's cabinet meeting as well. What should we note as the key ideas for change here when it comes to moon care? Right. Uh, Tuesday cabinet meeting was the starting point where we began to hear about this, uh, uh, you know, medical uh, the coverage of the national medical mm-hmm. insurance. We, we've been talking about this a lot, but this is first time that a UN government has actually began talking about it as official reform agenda here, and uh, we knew there was this was coming. The overall idea is uh, Moon Jae-in care, the main idea was it uh, vastly expanded the coverage by national 
health insurance. And so uh, health insurance will uh, will begin to pay for a lot of different services. Some of the typical one that's been mentioned is MRIs for our uh, Mm -hmm. brain scan and so on. Those people who have symptoms of stroke or some kind of, uh, you know, a little bit of headache, whatever. Yeah. Uh, there have been a lot of allegations that these expensive MRI services are being covered by the national insurance and people are just, you know, using this service because it's covered by the national mm. insurance. And uh, there are a lot of allegations of those people who visit uh, hospitals all the time. There are certain cases, uh, several thousand cases the government collected about those people who are using medical services more than 365 times per year. That means <laughs> <laughs> they go more daily. Hospital, yeah, more, more than daily, basically, <laughs> more than 600. So that doesn't make sense, they're saying. And mm-hmm. so that's a problem. And also some of the, the, the Korean citizens living abroad or foreign citizens who come to Korea and enjoy the na- national medical insurance just for that purpose mm. uh, and then with the perception that Korea's national insurance coverage system is uh, overly generous for those people who don't actually live here. Right. And so that's another issue. Uh, well, of course, we want to maintain our uh, you know, openness to all citizens and mm. people of different origin. That's absolutely a must the thing to do. But uh, in order to prevent and reduce the abuse of the system, that point seems to make sense as well. So Looks like what the Yun government is going to do is uh, set up a uh, body or a committee or review a mechanism to go over what is has gone wrong in terms mm-hmm. of excessive spending here. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're saying they're in, they're going to invite a lot of doctors uh, mm-hmm. so that they will minimize the opposition from the doctors. But uh, basically what happened under Moon government was because of this expansion, only the big hospitals gained a lot. There are a lot of patients, additional mm-hmm. patients, going to big hospitals offering this expensive service now covered by national insurance. So uh, doctors themselves may have their positions and so on. So Mm. we're expecting some adjustment, if you will, fine tuning of the system going forward. That seems to make sense. So overall, uh, you know, all this uh, reform agenda, pension, labor, education, Mm. and uh, real estate tax Mm. and uh, medical insurance, uh, repairing of it, all those sounds like a, a lot of daunting tasks, but in a way, something that a conservative government has to do uh, mm-hmm. as their main mission and job. So, makes a lot of sense. Thank you very much, Professor Kim, for summarizing all that went, uh, especially out of the last week's town hall meeting. Uh, we'll speak to you again next week. Stay warm. Okay. Thank you very much. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.